Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Spectrum Drama where we take a look at the hottest posts on Spectrum for the week and give our opinions on them. Okay so before we get started don't forget that uh, we are running another giveaway right now so if you want to be in with a chance to win the awesome Origin G12 Rover uh, then all you need to do is comment on this and every video in the month of August for your chance to win. And that's it so let's get started. Okay, so first up we've got a post from The Thomas and it says, I really hope CIG sees this Nubify video and takes it seriously. Um, so if you haven't watched this already, I recommend um, checking this video out now. Maybe pause the video, have a little look. Um, the link is in the description. Um, but essentially Nubify is kind of talking about the development of the game and his feelings on where we are and what they need to improve, um, you know, things that will make the community happy and, and just the whole experience uh, as a whole better. Um, and um, I mean, I agree pretty much entirely with the video. I think everything he says makes sense. Um, now, just to point out, um, it's going to be a slightly different video this week because we have no Cryco. Um, and so this week I'm actually joined the awesome Sprocket and also Huttich. How are you doing, guys? Not too bad. Doing well on yourself. Good. Hot. <laughs> Is it really hot where you guys are? Uh, no, no, I'm in the middle of winter. So, <laughs> no, definitely not hot. <laughs> nah, it's about 75 degrees here, Fahrenheit, and uh, it's nice and sunny. Got a nice breeze coming into the patio door, so I'm nice and comfy. Oh, I don't even know what those those Fahrenheit's are, but I I, I I'll believe you. Uh, um, it's about, <laughs> oh, I would say it's about between 20 and 25 degrees. Oh, that's not too bad. To closer to the 20 degree mark. Yeah, that's what Probably I prefer right for my summer. That's what a, 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 a good British summer. That's what it always was, and now we get like 30 degrees. Um, you know, over the next three or four days, it's going to be 30 to 35 degrees every day, which is ridiculous. So um, yes, I'm basically just going to be hugging my aircon. Um, but yes, so um, yeah, we're going to be getting the opinions of these two lovely gentlemen. Um, so um, who wants to go first with this awesome post from Nubify? Um, so I agree with uh, uh, a big chunk of it as well. Um, he, he was going on in his video about how they're parts of the company that he, he does agree that he likes, and then there's other parts that, that he doesn't. And um, the the I, I agree with a lot of people in a lot of comments that I've read that it's the marketing and the PR that seem to to get in the way of a, of a lot of things. And so while more transparency is needed on the development side a lot, I feel it's often what's going on and the process is often undermined by them trying to push out um, new sales and things like that to to garner money yeah uh, the other thing though that if you read through some of the comments and stuff is he's he says that he wants a down vote for for spectrum which i am of some of the people that uh, i'm a bit on the fence about that because i feel there's a lot of toxicity in the in the spectrum community and so i feel a lot of people will just get down voted even if they have a valid point just by people who don't like them or disagree whereas i think it is something that will be necessary for for dev questions and things like that for calling all devs where at least then the the community get a better option to say no i don't think this is a valid question at all I so, 100% agree because the the idea of having a downvote button downvoting can be abused upvoting you can't really abuse upvoting you know what I mean if you don't enjoy something you didn't enjoy it you don't upvote it but if you don't enjoy someone you can follow them around spectrum downvoting everything they've done and that to me could be abused real bad so yeah I definitely agree that that I, I'm completely on the other side of the fence um, I, I don't want it at all is I think at least if you if you keep the upvote, but you have like another little section which is like a thumbs up or a thumbs down or agree disagree, which can also kind of be tracked. Then at yeah. least then you know how many people are yeah this is this is what we want to know or no this is not what we want to know type of thing, and they're not going to get ne negated by people who just don't like them or completely disagree with their opinions or misunderstand things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What do you think about this? Not necessarily just the downvote in Sprocket, but the, the whole video uh, as a whole. The video as a whole, I, I do agree. And uh, because of this is one of the things that I've been banging on about for last few months is that we just need better 
communication from CIG. You know, this might be dwelling off a little bit off the topic of the video and the post, and um, is that that's that's the it, CIG seems like they put out these posts, you know, to you know to let to let the community know what's going on, and they don't follow up with it. And yeah. that's the thing is they need to follow up. I did notice a little bit earlier today while I was scrolling through Spectrum that in one of the threads, I don't remember which one, but there seemed to be more engagement from CIG to the community in that particular thread. Yeah, I know. So. Um, and that's 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 great. I mean, I really like to see that. And I think that's what the 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 uh, the tone. Uh, the, the, yeah, the Toma says uh, wants, and same thing with Nubifier wants, is they, they want that. They want that community engagement, and it's like they have enough people to do it. I mean, yeah. not everybody that works at CIG as a developer is working on some sort of code. They have people that sit there and monitor all the forums for, you know, bad people. And, well, why don't they interact with the community instead of just sitting there and there's you know the band hammer or they yeah. go and redact their post or something like that it's like they they need to have somebody there to interact with the community yeah and i mean spectrum was designed in such a way so that you know we can give our opinions and thoughts and on on the game the devs can see that they can respond you know and we can have this kind of interactive place uh, between us and them um, and what it actually became is just a really cesspooly reddit for this game um which um yeah, occasionally a dev will go on but the problem is is they still pick and choose um yes. the right um post to respond to they don't respond to things which could be negative they don't respond to things which i think really need a response they'll only respond to things that really benefits them in the long term which i think is a real shame yeah and also, uh, the newbie fire did point out about uh, these "ask me anything"s that to go into. You know, they're they're uh, calling all devs, and mm. they should. What newbie fire suggested is, is okay. The most upvoted vo upvoted questions don't necessarily always get answered, and yeah. it seems like when they just gloss over those that they should do, they should give a response and okay. And then you before I list out a bunch of options and they should do that. They really should. They should acknowledge this thing, okay, yeah, we can answer this question because of one of those options that are on the that were on the video that Nubu Fire put out. Yeah. And it's like I totally agree with that. Acknowledge us. Don't just sit there and ignore us. That's yeah. one of the that's the other thing that really, you know, grinds my gears about CIG is they don't acknowledge anything. No, only if it benefits them, unfortunately. Yes. And, um, I mean, w when it comes to the actual video, it's funny, actually, because we, we talked about this, I think, probably almost a year ago. I remember we were, we were it might have been on a Spectrum drama, it might have been a separate video. Uh, we were talking about the fact that the company itself seems to be going in a direction that we weren't happy with. Um, and we, I actually, oh, I tell you, it was a review. It was one of our um, patch reviews. And I said, they are starting to look a, a, more and more like EA every day. Um, you know, in, in their, their tactics, their marketing tactics, the way they sell, the way that they uh, pander to their um, customers, but without giving them anything and then take all their money. Um, you know, so they're, they're I 100% agree with him that the the devs, the teams that work on everything, the whole thing is, uh, you know, the whole development itself is a really good thing. It's just undermined by upper management and the way that they run the actual company side of things. And I just think that that's, that's what's letting them down. I agree. Um Another point that he makes on the video is he says that um, there should be more calling all devs. And I 100% agree with that because 
calling all devs, at least it's always something that's going on with um, the patch or the development. And as much as fun as the Star Citizen Live can be with um, some of the artists and stuff like that, a lot of that time it's just to show kind of how they go about doing certain things. So that's great information, like it's cool to watch, but it doesn't really give us any insight to what's currently going on with the game. So yeah. I personally think there should be more calling all devs and a little bit less um, Star Citizen Live, personally. Yeah, 100% agree. So people, essentially what we're saying is we pretty much agree with Nubifier. I think everything that he said, we kind of mirror, you know, his sentiment. Um, and um, yeah, I think, I think that is the takeaway is that these devs need to get back into the spotlight and, uh, and show us their goodies. Uh, the other thing about uh, the upvote downvote, as I can see everybody is on the panel's point of view, and I do uh, somewhat agree with what Nibifier says, that I think if they have the upvote downvote, it would show CIG on their posts that the community agrees or disagrees, because right now, you only get one side of the story and yeah granted they do have the little emotes that are next to it that you can use to you know thumbs up thumbs down you know the card palm or something like that next to it but it still doesn't show that okay you're going in the right direction if you have more down votes than up votes yeah yeah and no, i agree i think i think basically yeah you, you you're right there i think what that what they should probably do is they should um, any official CIG posts should have an up and a down vote. And there you just, go. yeah, any normal post should just have an up vote if people like it. And just leave it alone if you don't. Cool. So, next up, we've got a post from Anaril, I think. And it says, Where's the beef, CIG? Um, now, I warn you, people, this is a very long post. Um, you're going to need to do a lot of reading. Um, but it's, it's interesting. Um, essentially, um, the the long and short of this post is, um, you know, we've got 3.10, um, but there's not a lot of meat on the bones. And I think that's kind of really annoyed Anaril a little bit. You know, a lot of the things that we were kind of expecting, we kind of got, but there are some things which we may have only got kind of 50% of. Um, you know, and there's, there's a lot of things that they've added, but there's also a hell of a lot of things that they haven't. Um, and it's just a bit of an anemic patch. Um, and I said this, um, well, when we were doing the, the, the roundups for the actual roadmap, um, that it's a, it's a hell of an anemic patch. There's, there's just not much to it. Um, and other than body dragging, which turned out to be meh, um, it's, um, yeah, there's not much to it. I mean, the flight model and everything, I agree. Awesome. But, um, what, what do you guys think? Do you think that so far this patch has been everything you've expected or do you think that it's just a little you know a little light for content um personally uh for for it being a bit I, I think it is a little bit light for content um but i think all their patches since they've started this staggered development which i'm still waiting to see the benefit of have seemed to me at least a little bit light on on content um mm. He does go on to to basically break down each of the cards and how he's not happy with them. Yeah. And some, some of them, I agree, like the the Emerald Archimedes. I don't understand why this is put as such a, a big a big change because they already have the base ship. It's a, a reskinning. I yeah. don't know if they put any new components or anything in it. I don't think so. It's just a different color to go with the different colored um, Phoenix. Um, but then he has ones like where he gripes about the bartender, and it seems like even though it's been pointed out to us a few times, he seems to miss the point that the bartender is uh, is a proof of concept almost. Yeah. So it's, it's, I agree with him on quite a lot of his ones, but there are ones here and there that it's, I uh, think he's, he's missed the mark a bit with them. But personally, I was mostly just looking for the flight changes in this patch, but it is, it is quite a, quite a bare boned ones. And from what the roadmap shows, the next few are also not exactly going to be, um, heavy on content either yeah what about you sprocket how are you feeling about 3.10 my only issue right now is uh <clears throat> excuse me the targeting it's way more complicated than it needs to be yeah <laughs> and even though that i have monkeyed around with it played around with it and cig to their credit has changed from 
when 310 was originally in the PTU, for, you know, wave one up until now. Uh, they have changed that to make it a little bit better, but there's still far too many options to your targeting and pinning and cycling and all that sort of stuff in the options menu to make it really user friendly. And uh, that's really my only gripe is just targeting. I mean, the flight model I'll get I'll get used to. Everything yeah. else I'll get used to because it's 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 what they what they envision for the game to be, and it's like okay, that's fine. It's just everything else that's associated with flying is way more difficult now. Yeah, and that's one thing. That's 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 really my only gripe. And yeah, some of the things I do agree with the with the with the with uh, Anrel is yeah, I do agree with them. Others, it's like I just don't have an opinion on it because I haven't played around with most of the stuff yet because it's only been live since what yesterday yeah or, or today or something like that and it's yeah i haven't had a chance to really mess around with anything yeah we see we're in the same boat in that you know during the ptu you know we tro- we wanted to test everything over the course of our streams but to be perfectly honest we just couldn't because we do it in a group and it, it, everything takes four times as long when you're in a group because everything breaks every two seconds so it's horrendous um but um i mean i I kind of i do agree with him like you said um uh, hatich on a lot of these points and then yeah there are some in here where you think i think now you're kind of you're kind of clutching at straws now you know it's the um just just for something else to be angry about but um but yeah i think the whole patch is is a little light for content and i think that um a, a patch this light on content that's that far delayed that you know what was going on <laughs> what could what could have what could have caused that um i mean the flight model's awesome um i really like it i i like the fact that now ships have a bit of a feel to them um which is good um but other than that i haven't really noticed much of a difference the the targeting pisses me off um, because it didn't work for me or Cryco, uh, and in fact, it pissed us off even more that they changed it. I think they changed it three times in the course of the PTU, um, yeah. and so uh, we actually, as you may have or may not have noticed, people, we actually took a video down because we were so vastly wrong with our hotkeys that we're having to we're re-recording it this weekend um, because they just changed them every five minutes and um, you know I know that's what the PTU is about but it's very frustrating when you're trying to learn all brand new hotkeys and then they keep changing them so um, yeah I'm, I'm not pleased with this patch so far um, but we just have to see how it goes um, and um, see if we get a bit more beef <laughs> Um, the w- the one thing though that I will also then at least credit there that I am happy with is the fixed weapons fix. I know some people aren't, but oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I quite am because now my loner buccaneer actually has a point. It's not just something for me to die in, um, and I can actually use its 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 full firepower, which is 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 quite fun. And also for for the 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 group gameplay, I now actually feel a little bit more useful in a turret, and it's not as frustrating to try and shoot targets. So I think the turret improvements are also a little bit more more beneficial. Yeah. Um, the the one thing I'm actually surprised they didn't um, because they wanted to keep it as a surprise, which for me I I don't get. It's in it's in development. We're expecting things to come out, but the fact that the rock actually is the first iteration for the the tractor beam technology because it's the first time we've actually had that in game and yeah. i'm surprised they haven't actually leaned on that a little bit more and saying look this is what we've actually done because it is kind of impressive that that they've gotten that finally kind of going so. yeah it's kind of their style though they they tend to think things that we don't really want they like bells and whistles and fanfares and then things that people are waiting for just kind of slide out <laughs> it's really odd um you, yeah you would have thought that they would have um put a little bit more emphasis on that maybe yep pr department man their pr department is something else yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay so next up we've got a post from the mighty washburn and it says cig please make a show or post detailing the current status of the pillar technologies iCache, server meshing, Vulcan, servant to client, actor networking rework, god they they make everything such a mouthful, etc. Um, and he's basically saying, um, well he's saying, he's not saying this is because the, he thinks the project is doomed um, or he's demanding it, he just thinks that it would be helpful to both CIG and the community 
and I agree. Um, but what do you guys think about the idea of having this kind of a show detailing the the, the, the core stuff for this game rather than the fluff? <laughs> I think it's, it's necessary. I agree 100% as well because, I mean, if you look at all the times that they actually take questions, they, there's eventually a question about something to do with server mission, something to do with Vulcan. If you watch any of the YouTube people that, that follow this project, people are always asking about these things. So I think yeah. they should give my only problem with it is um one of the comments actually pretty much states this is we're going to get fluff like um if they give us any information on this like we do with roadmap roundups and stuff which is just like it's just a little bit further it's just yeah it's a little bit further we're not going to get the answer so until they they fix their transparency issues and actually communicate with us it, it's it's a nice idea but i think if they do do this we're not really going to get any of the answers we're looking for for me i think um his entire his entire premise could be incorporated into calling all devs. Yeah. If they answer the questions. <laughs> yeah, if they answer if they yeah, then that's and that's it. If they answer the questions. And it goes back to, you know, communication and you know trusting CIG will do what's right for the community and the game instead of just for them. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, answering questions like on iCache, server meshing, all that other, all the other items that he, that the original, that uh, the Mighty Washburn put out. It's like, yeah, all that stuff could be answered in the Calling All Devs episode or multiple Calling All Devs episodes. So you don't really need to have another time sink for the developers to come in and answer questions that could be answered in the Calling All Devs episode. Yeah, I agree. I think that, I think that's, that's, pretty spot on that i think that um whichever way they do it they need to do it they, they do need yes. to give us some updates on these things because um i mean we have this debate constantly um mostly from one of our subscribers in the discord um about you know oh it's never the server's fault and all this sort of stuff but the the, the reason that people get so pissed off with you know um the game and they blame a lot of things on the server or they blame a lot of things on a particular facet of the game is because we don't understand it as well as we should and we should they should be telling us what these things are doing how they're going to affect us and how far along are we when are we going to get these things these are the important things that we need to know and we just don't know yeah so you're basically right there um because these are things that we we need answers to because it's it's the backing tech for this this whole game that's gonna make it reach this grand scale and we kind of need to know where they are what's happening understand it so that there's not really i think i cash is this i think i cash is that so they can kind of you know cement it a bit better and let us know so there's a little bit less um unrest yeah. going on about uh, we, I mean, most of the stuff I do not understand. I'm not a developer. I'm not a programmer. I don't know anything about, you know, making of the sausage using air quotes there. Mm. But we all can understand, at least I can understand the the need for better communication. I mean, we don't need to have an hour long episode with nothing but techno babble in there because nobody's going to watch it. Yeah. So if they, so if they have somebody who is capable of, you know, taking this, taking this techno babble, converting it or boiling it down to something that regular normal folk can understand, that would be great. That's yeah. like iCache does this, this, and this. Server meshing does that. Vulcan server to client, actor network, rework, whatever the hell that means, <laughs> does this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like it's like yeah, I would I would sit there and watch that because I do sort of kind of like watching how the sausage is made because I groove on sausage. Yeah, I really do. I like the way it tastes, so I want to know how it's made. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, uh, yeah, I agree, hundred percent agree with both of you. I am, um, and I just have to point out as well that you know I've again I don't normally read the comments as you guys know because they are just toxic, but this made me laugh quite a considerable amount so um somebody commented cig don't care about their community and someone else commented that's not true i've noticed a number of threads deleted and or closed in the past few days so cig <laughs> definitely cares <laughs> is, that in, is that in this thread yeah it's literally like the top comment i love it, it it's 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 utterly perfect for the current climate of spectrum, oh yeah you yeah. know 
Um, yeah, with the band hammer swinging and all this other stuff. And uh, tell yeah, me about it. <laughs> utterly brilliant. I mean, yes. If for those of you who don't know, we were talking about this last week um, that we had someone in our Discord who was actually banned for no good reason whatsoever, and that person was Sprocket. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just for no yes. fucking reason. They just they well, just don't they it, don't like it, opinions. <laughs> Well, no, I think it's, I think it was, uh, I violated some sort of edict on, you know, the standards of conduct, whatever the, whatever that is. Yeah. Um, not whatever that is, but whatever the naming is of the actual name of the rules of behavior or whatever it's called. You were supposed to um, curtsy, weren't you? Or something? Well, yes, the <laughs> curtsy, you know, you know, the <laughs> ministry of silly walks type shit. <laughs> and, uh, no, I think I violated something about discussing moderators actions in spectrum i think that's what got me banned for a day yeah god forbid but you I'm not call sure. someone out on being a dick right <laughs> and so yeah. so for about a day or so i was sort of kind of gun shy about replying and that's like i actually just dm'd the person i was going to comment on saying yeah i agree with you on this but be careful of what you say because of whatever phrase that they had in there mimicked what there was pretty close to what I had posted and yeah. it got me banned or got my or got my post redacted by the moderators so oh, I yeah. just let them know and say hey dude man be careful word of advice <laughs> word of unsolicited <laughs> advice be careful yeah. because they don't like they don't like having their dirty laundry, dirty laundry aired no they um they're heavy handed um with the band hammer and um and it's become worse and worse so yeah that just made me laugh i love the fact that that it's not just us that spot it from the outside all these people who live in spectrum day in day out see it as well yeah. you know so yeah it's quite entertaining cool so last up we've got a post from john bradley and it says i think a thumbs up for the vehicle experience team is in order um, so it says, yeah, sure, 3.10 is a bit light on content, as we've just discussed. Um, but I've got to give a massive thumbs up for the work achieved to the flight experience in 3.10. Um, he does go on a little bit about, um, you know, he's actually a casual helicopter pilot and, you know, other flight sim enthusiasts. Um, and a bit like I think we've been saying uh, on this channel for a while, the flight model from about 2.0 seven i think it was onwards was just just became a bit of a floaty mess um and um this has really kind of tightened it back up again you know it's got a fun feel to it and that i think john really appreciates so um given that you are normally my um my chauffeur sprocket how do you feel yes. about the uh, the flight model now and, and are you enjoying it more um in 3.10 well the flight model itself the controlling of your spaceship in atmosphere and out of atmosphere is is fine i don't have any problems with that because i know that that's going to change between now and whenever the game is finally released mm -hmm. uh, my only real niggle with it is those departure splines <laughs> is when you are departing from a planet-based airport for lack of a better term spaceport that you got to that you actually have to spin your craft around to try to find out where these departure splines are for me i think that the departure spline should be directly in front of the ship in the direction the ship is facing mm -hmm. so you just you just rise up out of the rise up out of your hangar or move forward out of your hangar and they should be right there so you yeah. don't have to you know break immersion by going you know twirling about you know doing a pirouette trying to find where your deplight your departure splines are that's yeah. my only real problem so when i first get into the game i go to a port where i don't have to worry about that so i either go to port alisar or i go to grim hex or one of the other r and r stations that happen to be around or even an orbital port so i don't have to deal with that anymore because yeah. that that to me until they fix that is a real it's a real negative for me. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, it gives me a reason not to go down to the planet. Right. Okay. Oh, but when you have gone down to a planet, um, how have you found the atmospheric flight? Atmospheric flight is fine. 
I yeah. haven't been down in a large ship. I mean, I think the largest ship I used was our last stream last or earlier this week, and I caught was black. Yeah. So uh, that seemed fine. Uh, before, during the PTU, I was in the atmosphere in a, uh, I think my Avenger and my Titan. Uh, that seemed to fly really well in atmosphere because, well, it's shaped like an airplane or at least, a, you know, like a, a, a floating or, a, or a, God, a lifting body. I think that's what it's called. Uh, that really, I really enjoyed that. But as far as uh, anything bigger than a Cutlass, I, I don't have experience in it yet. Okay. And Hutted, how do you feel about this new flight model? Are you finding it sort of a little bit more sort of there's a bit more feel to it, a bit more intuitive, or much the same. Um, I'm I'm finding it's 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 um, different, and for me, different in a in a good good way. So I've enjoyed what I've experienced. Um, I haven't had much much time um, in atmosphere, but I did fly about in it, and it was quite a quite a lot of fun. So I'm I'm enjoying it. Um, I also do do acknowledge that they do deserve a thumbs up for for what they've done but they do still have a ways to go because i agree with sprocket the landing splines at this stage are horrible i also think that even i mean some people will most likely disagree with me but they should have the spline straight off from your hangar yeah um, straight on a path out even the ones where you raise vertically they can figure out some form of adjustment that you can you can um get straight into the the spline because yeah when when i first took off from a planet the spline was right behind me and i hadn't played since 3.9 and completely forgot it was even a thing yeah so same. it's <laughs> it's 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 not not the greatest um and then the other thing that i do think they need is still a bit more tweaking with is how they were saying they don't want ships to kind of just hover and i was watching your stream from the other night and you were in the hornet yeah. following Crico easy, around. easy and mode yeah, and you're still floating around really easy, and I thought yeah. that's what they were trying to kind of prevent. So I think it, it still needs still needs work, but yeah. I do think it's getting getting better. Although one thing I will add to that, um, there, there's the odd occasion with the Hornet where if you get low enough and your landing gear's down, it almost thinks you've landed, and so you just hover. But if you're a tiny bit off the ground. Um, if you're not pressing forwards, you will just land. You'll fall out of the sky and land, which happened about nine times. That's why she kept saying, landing complete, take off, and all that. So um, it's harder than it looked. I'm just an expert pilot, as we all know. Um, <laughs> but um, sure, but yeah, sure. <laughs> it is it is floaty. It is still a bit floaty in some ships. Although, who was it was flying? Um, I can't remember what it was. It might have been the Hammerhead or something like that, where if you give it nothing, you, you drop like a stone. And I love that. I think that's how it should be in most atmospheres. Yeah, that's that's what what I picture. And I think with the with the Hornet at this stage, it's it's not a bug. It's a it's a feature. Yes. <laughs> Being 900, 900 years in the future in general, it's like yes, ship should be able to hover indefinitely. Mm. Yeah, it's true. I don't know. I mean, it's I mean the technology should be it should be way more advanced and basically like two decades ahead of what we have now. Yeah, I, think, I mean, I'm just—it's—it's it's just for me. It's like, all right, it's 900 years in the future. For crying out loud, Star Trek has already developed time travel by the 26th century. I mean, why can't, why can't the 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 uh, the ship manufacturers of the UEE be come out, figure out mass reduction technologies so where you don't have to worry about having thrusters? You just, yeah. you know, anti grav technology or whatever. I, you know, CIG and their dodgy history with anti-grav bikes lately but <laughs> uh, but you know something along those lines but that's just me thinking that the technology in Star Citizen is just woefully primitive compared to other other franchises. Yeah the problem, uh, the reason for that is this whole stupid World War 2 in space thing that, they, that Chris Roberts has got such a hard on for um, yeah. and so therefore even the most futuristic of futures for Star Citizen will still be quite primitive compared to space films and series because they're still trying to get that old-fashioned dogfight, that old-fashioned way of flying. Um, you know, yeah, you see it in, um, in in films and TV when they come down into atmosphere. Um, there's no, there is no difficulty for that ship 
whatsoever. Uh, remember, um, the f I, th I want to say it's the first or the second Star Trek, maybe it's the second Star Trek film of the new ones, where they're on that weird planet um, and they're trying not to interfere, but then they end up being chased by them. Does that ring a bell? Um, yeah. And yeah. they... Yeah, they leap off a cliff and their huge, great big Enterprise type ship comes just floating up effortlessly. And that is what would happen because. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're so far one. in advance that they're not going to be there going, Captain, oh my God, it's checking around like a loon, you know, or something. It's just, <laughs> it's just going to be, it's just going to be a ship that floats because the thrusters are clever, yeah. the technology's there, everything about it keeps it in the air. Um, I, so I agree. I mean, there was, <laughs> yeah, there was a uh, Star Trek Voyager episode, or actually a couple of them, where Voyager actually landed on a planet. It actually has really weird, daintily thin landing feet <laughs> that come out of the that come out of the secondary hull, and it lands. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's a ship that's bigger than anything in Star Citizen right now. That's oh, yeah. a couple hundred, three hundred meters in length. Oh yeah. Yeah. Millions of metric, well, maybe not millions, but, you know, a few hundred thousand metric tons in displacement. Freaking huge ship, you know, 12, 13 decks tall, taller than anything in Star Citizen. Mm. Comes down and lands and just boink, just nice, nice one point landing and be done with it and be able to take off too. But no, anything bigger, anything bigger than a constellation in Star Citizen now can't lift no. off from It'll, a planet. break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that I can see what they're doing. I can see where they're going with it. Oh, same um, here. You know, and uh, obviously they don't want to make it too easy. And let's face it, if we had all the technology that they had in these programs, it would be. You wouldn't really even need to fly as such, you know. But so I can kind of see where they're going. But yeah, I think that maybe having the option, I still think that having the option to auto land and stuff like that makes sense. And I don't know why that's not there at the moment. They might as well have kept a similar feature in, but yeah. that's just me. Anyway, tangent over. <laughs> yes. They should at least meet us halfway with the VTOL ships because, I mean, those are massive thrusters. So something yeah. like uh, the Cutlass should be able to hover. Something like the um, Valkyrie should be able to to hover. So just, yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Though, I mean, especially, yeah, you look at the Cutlass, those, those thrusters. Once those are pointing down, yeah, you should have no problems. I mean, if... If you look at the the Harrier jump jet, that you know that thing is all right. Fair enough, it takes a fuckload of thrust, but that thing hovers, you know. Yeah. So, so if that can do it now, or, or could do it back in the nineties, why the hell can't these ships hover successfully <laughs> so far in the future? It is insane, absolutely insane. But John, we definitely agree. Um, it, as a whole, I think they've done a bloody good job. Um, the 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 vehicle team really really do need to pat themselves on the back because they've taken something that was i think getting quite boring and stale and given it a new lease of life and it can only go up from here hopefully so um yeah fingers crossed okay so there you have it folks that is all the posts for this week uh, we hope you like them we hope you found them informative or amusing and if you did like them don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more star citizen content and don't forget to get into that comment section um, not just for your chance to win the awesome Origin G12 Rover, uh, but because we like to hear from you. Uh, we may not respond to all the comments, but we definitely read them. Um, so yeah, get in that comment section for your chance to win and because you're all awesome. Um, and if you haven't already, sign up to our Discord um, because there are other benefits to that. You get additional entries into the giveaway. Plus, you know, we're there and we love to talk to people. It's always fun. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you there. And don't forget, that we stream on a Thursday Star Citizen um, and we are going to be adding a new game to our roster hopefully on a Tuesday so keep your eyes peeled for that um, I think that is pretty much it so uh, Sprocket thank you very much for joining me you're welcome and Hutich you're a dude thank you very much no worries and that is it so uh, thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you again soon bye bye <laughs>